Alright, I'm back with once again, and in this one we're going to be adding the um, ability to move left and right using an analog stick, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, on the left you'll see that I added in two pictures. Um, now I'm going to be posting these pictures. I actually got these off of an example of the uh, off the end, end edge of the website. Um, so this is going to be like the bottom part of the knob, and this is what it's actually going to move. So, um, we're going to set this up. Thank God and Engine comes with a nice little class that makes you makes it easy to um, implement the ability to use an analog control. Um, so it's very, very, very nice. Um, but we are going to have to add in these two pictures first. We're going to go to Resource Manager. And we're going to go up to the Game Resources. And we're going to add in a new Game Resource. So we're going to do... Um, oh, I'm actually up here. I'm sorry. Copy this. Paste it twice. And then we're going to do Control uh, Knob for one. And then Control Base. And then come back down here. Go to the game resources, paste it. And so I'm going kind of quick. I've been doing this for about five or six hours now, making this tutorial for you get for you guys. So I'm trying to bang these out. Um, so I'm kind of rushing right now because it's midnight. But um, anyways, uh, I'm going to change this control knob and then control base. And then we're just going to come over to here and we're going to go uh, control. So it should be pretty familiar for you guys who've been watching all the t all the videos, um, how everything's working, how it's coming together, how to load images, how gravity works so far, things like that. Um, and as you saw in the last video, gra uh, collisions take care of themselves, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, now let me see. I want to go back to um, go back to game scene, and down here we're gonna create a new method again. We're gonna do private void uh, create controls. So. Um, so we're going to create the analog stick for the controlling. Um, so we're going to use a digital on-screen control. So we're just going to do um, final digital on-screen control. And this is a class which pretty much just lets us display and use an analog and let the user use it. Um, and then see when a user is actually using it and do things off of that. So you'll see what I mean. Um, equals new digital on-screen control. And then we're going to do... Uh, I actually forget all of the um, parameters here. Let me think. Uh, Twenty. That's the x coordinate camera dot get height, uh, which is going to be four eighty minus the resource man uh, resource manager dot get instance dot get um, enough dot control base dot get height. So what it's doing is first we're setting the x coordinate to 20, then we're going to need the camera height and subtracting um, the height of the base knob, which is, in this case, it's 120 pixels, and we're subtracting an extra 5 from that. So that'll pretty much leave the uh, knob in the bottom left corner. And then next we're going to pass in the camera, and then the control base region. So I'm just going to copy this part right here. Pass in the control base region next. that. And then um, after that we have to uh, put in the knob. So uh, paste that again actually and just change this to knob. And then let me think. I think there's a float right here. I have to look up what that does again. I can tell you in a second. And then new eye on screen control listener. And we're actually just going to create this right side here. So um, at the end here, you're creating a new ion screen control listener. Pretty much what it is is um, probably spelled it wrong too. Let me see. Oh, we need to actually import this first. Import the on screen control, and then import this. All right, and then um, implement these methods here. So on control change. Um, so what this is going to do is pretty much going to let us know when the controls are changed, obviously. Um, if we'd actually, um, we're going to change the names of these so we can actually see what they are. Um, so the first one is the, uh, pretty much just like the control, we don't even need that really. Um, now we're gonna, this is the uh, X value, and this is the Y, actually we change the Y next. Um, so this is how like strong they're moving to the left or the right, how up and down 
I'm showing their movement it's a up and down um, then the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna set a certain speed that you can go like a max speed so um, uh, player bodies are how you're gonna move the character um, the sprite isn't how you're gonna move it so um, we can do things with the player body so let me show you player body dot set um, we can set the velocity right here so we can set um, how fast we're going left to right or up and down we can do apply we can apply a force um, a linear impulse um, that'll move the character um, but what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if um, what the linear velocity is right like currently if they're moving to the left or the right um, and if they're moving a uh, certain speed so what we're going to do is we're going to do if player body dot get linear velocity dot x is greater than negative 8 and and so if it's greater than negative 8 so it's negative 8 plus so negative 7 0 etc um, player body dot get linear velocity dot x is less than 8 so if it's in between negative 8 and 8 then continue to make them go faster that's pretty much what we're going to do so we're going to do if um, x is greater than zero. Then we're gonna do player body dot set linear velocity to 8.0 f for the float, and then we're just gonna leave the the y velocity the same. So we're gonna get that velocity from the player body. So we're gonna do player body dot get uh, linear velocity um, dot y. So we're not gonna change that. We're gonna do else if x is less than zero. So if it's, if it's going to up here, it's saying if it's, if it's greater than zero, then it's going to the right. If it's less than zero, it's going to go to the left. Um, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right down here. I'm going to change this to negative eight. So we're going to move them to the left. Else, if it's equal to zero, pretty much, um, then we're going to set the velocity to uh, zero. So it's not the player from moving. So say, for example, um, you'll see you touch the analog and you move it to the left. If you let go, it goes back to the center. Therefore, the x value is not moving at that zero. So it's going to stop the player from moving. If you don't have this, for example, the player is going to keep on moving to the left or the right forever, um, unless you have friction or damping or whatever. Um, so we're going to add that in there. Um, and then that's pretty much it. We simply just need to add it to the actual screen. So we're going to do, um, I'm just going to do control. This is, I don't want to have to type all that out 50 times. I'm just going to do control dot um, get control base dot set blend function. And we're going to use, um, OpenGL uh, states right now to pretty much uh, blend it and let it be transparent. So we're going to do GL source alpha. And for those of you that don't know what, how GL, uh, OpenGL works, it's a state type of um, engine. Where everything's a state. So you set a state and then from there it does certain things. Um, so these are all, as you can see, they're integers. So each inter integer represents a certain thing to do. Um, and OpenGL goes off of that. Um, so we're going to do uh, GL1 minus, I think it's the source alpha, yeah, source alpha, and we're going to end that there, so it lets it be transparent, and we're actually going to make it transparent, so we're going to do get control base dot set alpha to point zero point five f, so we're going to make it half halfway transparent, um, then we're going to do control dot get control base, I can spell that wrong completely, um, we have to do that, uh, scale to the center, set scale, center, uh, 0 by 128, so I'm just going to scale it, scale it, um, and then I'm just going to copy this, because it's getting annoying to type that over and over. Uh, next we have to, well, we're going to set the scale of the base, so we're going to set it to a little bit bigger than what it is right now, we're going to set it to 1.25F, so it's a little bit bigger, a fourth bigger. Um, then we're actually going to do get control knob here, and we're just going to do the same thing, set scale to 1.25. So they're a little, little bit bigger on the screen. Um, and then we're going to do control.get. Uh, now we're just going to do control.refresh control knob position. So it's going to keep on moving it when the player touches it. It's going to refresh it. Then we're going to, this is a scene inside of a scene, by the way, again. So we're going to do set child scene digital on. Oh, wait, no. No, what am I doing? It's the old one. Control. Set child scene control. Um, now let's add this into here. We're gonna add it. Uh, oh, that's right. That is right. Um, so, say for example that we're moving the player, correct? Um, <coughs> oh, actually.
actually no, that'll still work for the jump. I was just say we need to add to the HUD, but because this is a scene inside of a scene, the camera doesn't affect it. Um, so you can actually just put it right under the HUD. Create controls. Um, now let's just make sure this works all fine and dandy. I'm gonna eat a pretzel. Alright, let's see. Did we add it to the scene? Let's see, let's see, let's see. figure out why it's not showing up. Give me one sec. I'm sorry, okay, I'm so stupid. So, remember I was saying how the Y coordinate's completely changed. Um, it's like opposite. So, um, where it starts is the Y coordinate on this. Instead of starting from the top right up here and going down, it starts right here. So, the Y coordinate increases as it goes up, like I was saying, and it goes down when you're, I mean, it decreases when you're going down. So, what we were doing is we were taking the camera height and subtracting it. Um, so we're making it go up. It's kind of confusing how it works. Um, but once you add that in, let me um, let me just double check on that actually. Alright guys, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I've been trying to figure this freaking problem out for like 45 minutes now. Um, for some reason the digital on-screen control doesn't show up on the Anchor Center version of And Engine. So what we have to do is we have to delete these completely. Um, click Delete Project contain Contents on Disk. Just click OK. So we do this really, really quick. It should take a little of about two minutes at most. Um, in the meantime, search up and engine on Google. Let me uh, open up um, internet here. Search and engine again on Google. It's so annoying. I've been searching and there's like no way to get around it for some reason. I'm not too sure what the issue is. But copy this to the clipboard again. Just copy the and engine clipboard. Go back into Eclipse. Go to File, Import. Projects from Git URI. Uh, click Next, and make sure you only have GLES2 selected. Click Next, and then um, you let me see. Uh, go to YouTube Workspace. Click Next again. You don't have to do that once again. Uh, I'm gonna wait for this to finish. All right, that's done. Um, then just click Finish again. We're just gonna completely install the next one really quick. Go down to. Um, Go to here and then scroll down to extensions and go to physics box to be again. Copy this uh, link here, right there. Go to this, go to import projects from git uri next. Make sure GLAS2 is selected next. Uh, then you just click next again. And then I'll wait. Alright, and then click next and then click finish again. Um, so just like last time, right click on and engine. Click Properties, go to Android, click 4.0, click Apply, click OK, and then right click, go to Properties, go to Build Path, click on 4.0, click OK, and then go to uh, the Physics Box CD, go to the Properties of that one, go to Android, go to 4.0. If this is a red marker, click Remove, then add it back in, um, click Apply, and then click OK, go to Properties again. Go to Java Build Path, go to 4 pin and click OK. That's just all of the errors. Um, then go to bin for each of them. And then what you should do is go to our platform, go to the libs folder first, and then just delete these two right here. Delete them, they're gone. Also delete all of these folders here. Delete all of those, they're gone. Um, now go up to and engine. Drag this down to the libs folder. And close that then. Then go to here, go to bin, drag this down to the libs folder. And then go to the libs folder of the uh, Physics CD Box CD and copy these three folders, copy them into the libs folder. Okay, and that should fix our problem. Um, I'm not too sure why it was doing that. It's really, really annoying though. Go to main scene um, and then go to the imports and then just delete color and then re import it because they have different places. And make sure you do the and engine one. Go to game scene and just do the same thing. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so go back to the game scene now. I was messing around with this for a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to set this to 20. And then this is the camera. This shouldn't change for you guys. That camera that get height minus this dot get height minus 5. Alright, so that's
that's all set up then. Then go up to Tile Manager, change this to 50, change this to 100, and change this to 100, and then change this to negative 50. Um, just to make that, to make sure that's all set up. Um, actually, change this to uh, make this negative 50. Make that 50. Make this 100. I make th yeah, okay, that's good. Um, all right, cool. And then go to Tile Man or go up to the sensor here. And make sure you delete the negative because it's going to flip the x-axis or the y-axis back over. Now, if you run it, it should show up the analog and it should be able to move your player. Sorry about all those problems there. It's been pretty annoying, honestly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, whatever. It should be working now. The play buttons might be messed up. All right, we got to move our character a little bit. Let's um. Okay, let me see. Let's go to the player. And oh, whoops! I was moving him around. Click, type in negative 100 here. Make sure the player's in negative 100. Then go to the menu, main menu scene and go to this and just type, um, oh geez, what was it? Type a 40 for now. And then run it. Try this. This should work fine then. Sorry about all those problems. Come on, install. Why is it not found? There we go. Whoops. Okay. Um. Okay. Whoops. Actually, do do minus twenty here. My bad. Uh. But that's not really that necessary. Click play. All right. Cool. So now you can move your player left and right with the analog. Um. Now obviously you can't jump yet, and it is a little shaky if you notice that. Um. Now I do have a solution for that. Uh, but we'll do that. Actually, we can do that right now. Um, I'm going to give you a link to a certain file that I found online. Um, the reason that it's creating that problem is because of um, the physics world, the way that it works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to give you guys this file. I'll, um, I'll uh, put this on like a notepad. I found it online. If I knew who it was, I'd give it credit, but I did not make this. So I'm not taking credit for it. If you, I'm sure if you look up Max Step Physics World, it would come up. But um, for now, I'll just leave this. I'll give you guys all this code. Um, pretty much, it pretty much makes it much more smoother when you run when you run the game. Um, so get that from the description, and then come back to the game scene and change fixed step physics world to max step physics world, and just import that then, and then run it, and it should run much smoother, much smoother. I was very impressed with the uh, with this actually, it helped a lot. Play and yep, it is so much smoother. It's so nice. Okay, um, and then we can. We're actually gonna add in the jump uh, button next video um, because we went so far and this took about 18 minutes or so. I'm probably gonna go to bed. I've been doing this for seven hours now. Um, but I hope you guys like the video so far. Uh, next one will be up soon. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.